Welcome back, Curious Minds and Biologics, to Atomic Booger, the podcast where we program our minds to be super smart with amazing facts about the world. I'm your fully human brainiac host, Adam. And I'm your fully dragon sidekick, Booger. Today, we're zooming into a world of whirring gears, blinking lights, and super cool circuits. That's right, Booger. Today, we're talking all about robots. From fiction to reality, get ready to discover everything from what robots are to their incredible history, how they've inspired our favorite stories, and how they're making a real difference in our lives. Ooh, I hope we get to meet some robots that can bring me a sandwich. (laughs) Think bigger, Booger. Think bigger. Okay. (laughs) Then I hope the robot brings me a really, really big sandwich. Ugh, Booger. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a robot? Is it like a metal person who makes sandwiches? (laughs) Hey, hey. Well, a robot can definitely make sandwiches, but it's much more than just a metal person. A robot is a machine that's controlled by a computer program to move and do certain jobs. These jobs can be super simple, like roaming around the house, vacuuming floors, or incredibly complicated, like traveling to and exploring different planets, just like NASA's Mars exploration robots. Wow, so they're like super powered helpers. What about those robots that look just like us? (laughs) Ah, you're talking about humanoid robots. These are robots that have a body shape similar to a person, complete with a face, eyes, and mouth. They have sensors to understand their surroundings and motors in their joints that let them move. They can even be programmed to think on their own or be controlled by a human. They are not thinking in the same way as a human, though. I bet humans only started building robots recently, right? Like, after they invented video games. (laughs) You'd think so, Booger. But humans have actually been building robots for centuries? That means hundreds of years. Many people believe the first robot was created over 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. That must mean they had sandwiches back then. A man named Architas had built a burr-like machine propelled by steam that could actually fly. Wow! A steam-powered flying bird robot! That's ancient awesome! <laughs> and centuries later, in 1495, Leonardo da Vinci even drew plans for a robotic man-shaped machine. But the word robot itself is much newer. It was actually first mentioned in a play called R.U.R or Rossum's Universal Robots, by a Czech writer named Karol Čapek in the year 1920. The word robot came from the Czech word robota, which means forced labor. Forced labor? That sounds like when I have to clean my scales. (laughs) What was the first humanoid robot? Oh, was it sparkly? The first humanoid robot to really capture attention was named Electro. Built by a company called Westinghouse in 1939 for the World's Fair. Electro was seven feet tall, could speak about 700 words, and could even smoke cigarettes and blow up balloons. No sandwiches. (laughs) Doesn't seem that useful. (laughs) It was actually pretty amazing at the time. Now, speaking of robots and adventure, let me tell you an inspirational story about a very special little robot named Clink. Ooh, a story. I love stories. And that's a good name. Clink. Clink was a tiny robot, no bigger than your fist, with a shiny silver body and two large earnest blue optical sensors for eyes. He was built to organize, but Clink was... Well, a bit clumsy. His main job was to tidy a young inventor's workshop, which was always a whirlwind of wires, gears, and forgotten blueprints. Go, Clink! 
Clink would zip around on his small wheels, often bumping into things and sending small parts scattering with a comical bonk or clatter. Sounds like me. <laughs> he had a programming goal. Help the inventor. One blustery afternoon, the inventor was frantically searching for a crucial microchip, muttering about a big science fair deadline. The workshop was a disaster. Clink knew he had to help. He scanned the room, his blue eyes whirring. The microchip was on a shelf, high above his reach, nestled amongst a pile of old comic books. Uh-oh, high shelves are tricky. <laughs> My wings are too big for shelves. <laughs> Indeed. Clink zoomed towards the shelf, his little arms extending, but the chip was too far back. He tried to stack some books to climb, but the stack wobbled and toppled with a dramatic crash. Dust motes danced in the air as Clink lay momentarily stunned amidst the paper chaos. He could hear the inventor sighing from across the room. Oh no! Poor Clink! But Clink didn't give up. Yeah, Clink, go get him! <laughs> he reset his internal gyros and thought, How can I help the inventor? He noticed a discarded spring from a broken toy next to a miniature ramp the inventor used for testing small vehicles. An idea sparked. Clink carefully positioned himself at the bottom of the ramp, placed the spring behind him, and with a mighty whirr, he launched himself up. He bounced onto the shelf, a perfect landing. But the microchip was still just out of reach stuck under a particularly large comic. So close! Clink knew he needed a tool. He spotted a tiny electromagnet on the workbench. Quickly, he retrieved it, returned to the ramp, and with another spring-loaded launch, he zipped back to the shelf. With a precise click, he activated the electromagnet, and the microchip flew right into his tiny magnetic grabber hand. Thwap! Thwap? <laughs> yes, thwap! He carefully made his way back down, carrying the precious chip. The inventor, who had been watching, gasped in surprise and relief. Clink, you found it! You're a genius! Yeah! Clink is the best! <laughs> Clink's blue eyes glowed, not just from the task completed, but from the joy of helping. From that day on, Clink still bumped into things sometimes, and the workshop was still messy, but the inventor always remembered that even a clumsy little robot with a big heart could solve the biggest problems through persistence and clever thinking. Clink learned that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you keep trying and adapting. And sometimes a little bounce can get you exactly where you need to be. Which could possibly be to fetch me a sandwich. <laughs> Booger! What? I can't fly on an empty stomach! <laughs> Adam, that story was awesome! It makes me want to tell a joke! <laughs> Why didn't the robot go to the doctor? Hmm, uh, I don't know, Booger. Why? Because he had a virus, like a computer virus! <laughs> That joke made me sick. Let's see you do better. Okay, my turn. What do you call a robot that always takes the longest route? Uh, a meandering machine? A Roomba. Like a Roomba, but it roams. Like your sense of humor. Knock, knock. Who's there? Robot. Robot who? Robot, you glad we're talking about robots? <laughs> <laughs> to everyone listening to this episode, I'd like to apologize for the horrible jokes. But hey, we're only human. Or dragon. Robots aren't just for jokes, though. They're also super important in our culture. Think about movies and TV shows. In the classic film Metropolis from way back in 1927, there was the Maria Impersonator, who was the first robot ever shown on film. And Star Wars has R2-D2 and C-3PO. They're famous. <laughs> exactly. And in the real world, there's even a robot named Sophia with incredibly lifelike facial expressions and advanced conversation abilities. 
She's so famous, she's become a global sensation and even gained citizenship in a country. A robot citizen? Can she vote? <laughs> We don't know about voting, but she definitely makes people think about the future of human-robot interaction. And way back, a famous science fiction writer named Isaac Asimov came up with the three laws of robotics in his stories to make sure robots would never harm humans. These ideas influenced a lot of how we think about robots today. <laughs> Let's not forget about that cute robot from the future named Wally. -E. <laughs> oh. oh, I love Wally. -E. Robots do so many amazing things for us. They help with everyday chores, like the Roomba vacuum cleaner, which has sold over 15 million units. And there are lawn mowers that are like Roombas for your yard. Robots even explore space, like the Mars rovers that gather information about other planets. And they go underwater to find sunken ships and learn more about our ocean floors. And they can do dangerous jobs, right? So humans stay safe. That's a big part of it. They're used in medicine for things like surgery, in agriculture to help farmers, and in factories to build cars quickly and precisely. And some robots are even designed to be companions, like the Pinkie Pop robot or Sony's AIBO robotic dogs, who can learn and adapt to their owners. They are a great blend of technology and fun. Well, that's it for our episode about robots. Booger, let's leave our audience with a question. Where is my sandwich robot? Booger. There's no such thing as a sandwich robot. Okay, there might be a sandwich robot. But you'll have to be patient. Okay, what's the question for our audience? The question is, if you were to create a robot, what problem would you want it to solve? Or what job would you want it to do? And why? Let us know your answer on Instagram or Facebook at Atomic Booger Official. We want to hear your ideas. I can't wait. Maybe someone will have a potato chip robot to go with my sandwich. <laughs> Ugh. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Until next time, see you later and be greater. Atomic Booger is a production of Light Circle Entertainment, copyright 2025. Produced by Mark Rako. There's much more at AtomicBooger.com. Atomic Booger is intended for entertainment purposes only and may not be the opinion of Light Circle Entertainment or its associates.